Judges chapter 7. Thank you very much. I'll read you also Judges chapter 7 because this is something that is bigger than each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. The Lord in his word in Judges chapter 7, I read from verse 3. He said, Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But that assignment was even greater than that which 10,000 men could do. It was greater than what 32,000 men could do. But what did the Lord say? But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take, down, take them down to the water and I will thin them out for you there. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs, while the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, with 300 men that laps, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. Amen. 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 Beloved, this work is greater than what a million people will do. The work is greater than what 10 million people will do. But this day, we have come to ask the Lord that as we are partaking of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may our names be listed in the two, in the 300. Amen. Thank you. Amen. It was reduced from 32,000 to 300. Whatever that reduction is, may the Lord remember us and keep us as part of the global remnant and Amen. Amen. So we are partaking this day, asking that the Lord will not pass us by, but that we also remain as part of the global remnant army. If in the case of Gideon, it was 300 from 32,000, whatever that number is in our own dispensation, may the Lord keep us as part of the global remnant army. Amen. Let us Amen. leave the bread and the, and the, and the wine. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this season in our lives. We come to you, O oh God, even as Gideon came with his 32,000. And Lord, you looked at the 32,000 and decided to thin them. And you brought them down, O oh God, to 300. We pray, Father that as Christ came and did the finished work on the cross and we have become co-heirs with Christ, we pray, Father, that we will, as we partake this day of this bread and wine, it becomes to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, may this, O oh Lord, be as a sign and a covenant that we make with you this day that it is our desire that you will not pass us by, but that you enroll us in your global remnant army. Enroll us, O oh God, to go out and become this beautiful feet that bring the gospel to the people. Enroll okay. us also, Father, that we will go to the ends of the earth, bringing this message to the ends of the earth, baptizing your children and teaching them in your ways. Enroll us, Father, this day and equip us to bring your word to the rest of the world for your glory, that they will partake in total surrender to you, that in the days of Gideon, it was 300, 
And in our own time, Father, whatever that 300 signifies, we partake, Father, to our enrollment in that number for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love, let's break the bread and partake. Oh. One of the things Christ said, which the people did not understand, he said he would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Mm. There is no rebuilding that can be done if it is not centered on our Lord Jesus Christ. In this our dispensation, it will not work because we are building a kingdom that is held in place by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we partake of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we also stand in the center with him to orchestrate the rebuilding of his kingdom here on the earth. Let us partake. So, beloved, I just want us to unmute for a second, and together we just pray and welcome um, Pastor Pauline to bring the word for us. Let us unmute for one second and pray. Father, we say thank you for this time. Lord, for this thank you for your word that we have come to receive. We thank you for your daughter, your servant. Thank you. We pray, gracious God, our Father, that we will be built and to the lives of our communities. Father, we pray that you would use her also a great peace to speak to us in this time. That I pray that the words that will come will answer the questions that I have in my mind even at this time. May it be a word for each and every one for your glory. Jesus mighty. Amen and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We are in the number. We are in the number. We are in the number. Saved by grace. We are we are in the number. Yeah, we are in the number. Yeah. Say by grace. Amen. Amen. Tell your Amen. neighbor, I am in the number. I am in the number, neighbor. Say it aloud like you believe it. I am in the number. Say it by grace. Amen. 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 I bring you greetings, let me say, from Uganda, because <laughs> when I was in Texas, Emma, in Virginia, it was just, I just landed and went straight to the altar, and there was no time, you know, for some details. But I thank God for this uh, opportunity, because it is time for us to understand where we are, where we are going. And as Brother Kwame said, uh, that from 32,000, God reduced the army to 300. I want to believe that we are God's 300 in the season. That's why I said we are in the number. Um, I thank God for the altar of, uh, I call it the altar of reconciliation and equality because that's the platform. But every year we, we, we go up higher what God wants to do on the altar of reconciliation and equality this year is he wants to manifest on that altar. And uh, the, the location of that altar is in Gettysburg, in Barakwame's house. 
life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. And there's no geographical limitation, you know, when it comes to spirituality. So each time you get to that altar, the heavens are open and uh, you hear God. So I want to encourage us that in as much as we, we have the platform, we have the Zoom, we have, I want to encourage us to make use of that altar. And I celebrate um, Mother Mildred who has invested. There's so much wealth in that house. You know, people who look externally will begin to look for furniture, this, that, and that. That's okay. But the, the, the kind of spiritual investment that this woman has invested in that house can only be seen by somebody who is really spiritually connected. So I want to encourage you that when you lose your way, you don't even know what to do, but just ask her and take one night and just retreat and ask the Lord, you know, if you can go down to the basement and just spend the night, you will hear God. I mean, as clear for me, each time I get there, I hear in my ears. I don't struggle. There are some places where you go, it's very difficult to hear because the heavens are closed. But I, I, I can attest to the fact that that place is where the heavens connect to the earth as far as we are concerned. And so I want to thank God for mother mildred for keeping that house you know the bible says a wise woman builds her house if it has um, there is a currency that is bigger than the dollar and and that's the currency she uses she has the capacity to make a hundred thousand dollars a year by her qualification and everything but she lays that down in order to make a hundred thousand plus in the spirit and so when you go there and you are rightly connected, you will invest because there's something bigger than gold and silver. And those who understand tap into it because life is spiritual. I can say that again. So I want us to celebrate her this morning. I want us to, to celebrate. Let us just unmute and thank the Lord for a woman after God's heart. Let's Amen. just pray before we continue. Father, we thank you for Mother Mildred. We are really, really Amen. grateful. The value of the heavenly currency. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That night when I came back from, from Virginia, I went down to the basement. I was really exhausted. Remember when I left Africa, I had to, to spend two nights somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And then I landed from the airport. When Brother Kwame picked me from the airport, I entered straight into the car. The car was already waiting at the door. So we just moved from the airport into the car and drove to Virginia and the next day we were on the altar. So it was back to back, back to back. But then, so when I finished 
from the altar in Virginia. I came back to the house. That same night, I got down to the basement and I passed out. The second night, I was asking the Lord the way forward for the manifestation. So what, what next? Because the Bible says, for lack of vision, in Proverbs 29, verse 18, for lack of vision, the people perish. And on this platform, we are visioners. We will not go when the Lord is not going ahead. We will not go because we want to. It is not church as usual. It is not an ordinary platform. We are led by the Spirit. And where God is going, we go. When he stands, we stand. So I wanted to know what next. And the Lord said, GRA. So I got up and said, GRA. What is GRA? And so we reasoned together back to back. And then the Lord said, there's a global remnant army. Global remnant army. So we are part of this army on this platform. It is a global remnant army. So one of the projects we'll be carrying out is to create a website for that global remnant army. And the, the, the Lord had to break down the details how we're going to begin to rebuild with, 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 on, on, on a, with prayers. So God wants a remnant army. It's not just, oh, come and let us pray for breakthrough here and there. It's okay to pray for your breakthrough, you know. I think Pastor Eze is doing a good job there. You can go there for your breakthrough. But what I'm talking about is for the rebuilding of the nations, is for the reconstruction of the nations, is for the restoration of God's kingdom on earth. And so we need to create that website. And so when you go there and Google and you click to Africa, Africa will come up. God's prophetic mind for Africa will be detailed there. And the prayer points will be written so that you pray for Africa according to God's plan for Africa, according to God's will for Africa, not according to your emotions or how you feel. When you click on America, America will come out with a prophetic mind of God and you are going to pray according to God's mind for America. And so with all the nations of the world, as God begins to give us direction one by one. So the Lord said, that is what we will do in the spiritual. So we're going to establish a global remnant army. Uh, on the natural, because life is spiritual, the spiritual is just a food for you to do the, the, the practical, the physical. The Lord said we are Nehemiahs because it's time for rebuilding. It's time for reconstruction. So in one hand, you are going to fight spiritually and on the other hand, you are going to build. So that was the, the direction that the Lord gave. Because the command is go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus. And then he said, ask for the nations. Ask of me. And I will give you the nations for your inheritance. That is in Psalms number 2, 7 to 12. He said, ask of me. And I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. And you shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. But most often we ask for meat and drink. Father, give me food. Give me a job. Give me a husband. Give me a child. Give me, you know, four children, three boys, five girls. Give me this. Give me that. All those things. All of them are good. And we have a testimony that when we ask of those things, God gives them to us. That's why all of us are testifying about how God has responded to the things that we've asked. People have double promotions, double certificates. September, we are full of expectation. But God is saying, this GRA is for those who will ask of the nations, ask of him, and he will give us the nations as an inheritance. So you have done well asking for yourself and you, ha you have a testimony of how he has answered. It's now time to stand on that feet and begin to ask for the nations and he will give it to you one after the other. And so we have this vision which the Lord has given 
and it is very, very, uh, it is very huge. It is bigger than you, bigger than me. Amen. So God, what, what, what this is God's size. So what do you do? You go down, you cannot work 24 hours, make all the money, all the salary for one year put together. You cannot go and take one nation with that. The same you. So only God can help you do that. And he has a strategy which we are going to begin to learn how to, um, to, to do the god size thing using his strategy. So you cannot use your own strategy and do his, his bidding in the season. So in Psalms 37, verse 23 to 24, the Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So when he gives you the big picture, you see the big vision, the nations, he's going to give you one step at a time. He's going to show you how to take the next step and the next step. Because sometimes, for those of us who are visioners, it's very, very difficult. When you see the big picture, you want to start from there. And sometimes you get frustrated because where you start, you, 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 it is right there in front of you. And maybe you are explaining, but people are not seeing. And I, and I, I think when I listen to... Um, um, Somebody talked about, testified about the, the Virginia. Uh, who was talking about Virginia as a testimony? Uh, about how those who came to Virginia and uh, Brother Kingsley. Kingsley. Yes, Brother Kingsley. Brother Kingsley was testifying. But I'm very sure that the first time we went to raise the altar in Virginia, Brother Kingsley, I'm sure he was just confused. What are these people saying? What are we doing? All of us who started raising that altar from the very day one, you just went out of obedience. Anyway, whatever this brother Kwame is saying, let me just go. I trust that. But I believe that with the altar of manifestation, there is understanding. There's, the, God has begin, it began to put understanding. And when Kingsley was speaking, I could attest to the fact that the spirit of understanding of what God is doing is beginning to set in. So there's establishment, getting the ground ready for manifestation. So that is the problem that we visioners have. When we see the big picture, sometimes you, you want to start roofing before you build a foundation. Sometimes you, you just want to appear, disappear and appear there because the end result is so wonderful. And that makes you to abandon every other thing and focus on that. And people think you're crazy. It's because you have seen what many cannot see. And so God has to open the eyes of the visioner to see ahead so that he can shepherd the flock to that destination. But then it's going to take one step at a time. One step. The Lord emphasized that let, when you see the vision, don't drag the people to the wall and crash their heads. Take one step at a time. So that's why we go and do one thing, come back and retreat and wait on the Lord for the next step. So the Lord also told me, he said, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. You know, that is in Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many, many plans, many plans. When you see that big vision, you want to make a big plan, but only his purpose will prevail. So we have to trust him more, especially on this great assignment that he's giving us. And he said, we should learn to live bigger than ourselves. You know, if your life is centered about me, I, myself, I want to be the best of me. I want to have a lot of money. I want to build so many houses. I have many children, buy many cars. And when I die, they will say, oh, she's that, that is that young lady or that young man who had a lot of money. She bought many cars. She built many big houses. Wonderful. Now she's gone. I don't think that is enough. Be, be ambitious. Make so much money. Make, buy many cars, as many as you can. Even buy a plane. We need a plane right now in Uganda to fly the, the, the round with the oil of manifestation because that's the required, the desire of that bishop's heart that he, he, he needs to put the oil of manifestation and fly it around his nation. So if you had a plane, you would have just borrowed it and taken it there, it would solve the problem. So do work so hard, triple hard, in order to do 
the God size, you know, things, not just your personal. That would be irrelevant because when you are dead and gone, nothing will be remembered about you. So I want to encourage us that you should be, we should be bigger than ourselves because what God is calling us to do now is bigger than us, is so bigger than us. But Akwame just announced that we are being invited to Uganda. You know, when we raised that altar, remember when we raised the altar, we went to Uganda and we raised an altar in Uganda and the Lord said he will raise the deliverer. He raised the deliverer. We were instrumental in the campaigns, in the discipling and everything and he won. Then I went back to Uganda and I stayed with him in his house for three months. And we went to the north, the south, the east, and the west of Uganda. So that is a nation in Africa that has gone ahead to, 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 to rescue their territory for God. And they see us like people who can disciple them into their purpose. Why? Because we ask for a nation. We ask for the nations. We all know that Brother Kwame on this platform, he will give his back for Africa. Those of us who know his roots can attest to the fact that he's working on his purpose. So in, in Uganda, God opened that door. And we all know how the place of Uganda, when it comes to uh, where the, the will of God for the season, the enemy is trying to use homosexuality to twist the minds of people and twist even the, the, the government and twist a lot of things. You know, it's just a few people who are intentional about their agenda. And they carry it with all the intensity and they convince governments, convince, you know, key places that this is the right thing to do. And they invest with their money. Why the homosexual agenda is such a big threat is because those who believe in it put in their money. They work hard to invest. So if we believe in what we believe, we should be able to fund it. If, you, if, we, if we don't fund it, it will just be noise. So this is a move of God. And uh, it takes funding, you know, for you to go to Virginia to raise that altar. You didn't walk there. You had to drive there. You had to stay in a hotel. A lot was spent, you know. Kwame had to lodge the leaders, fly them from one place to another. But, so it takes money to do that. For us to go to Uganda, it takes money to do that. That's why we are relevant there. Now, you, money answering all things. So why does God give you the ability to work hard? It's so that you can invest in his kingdom. So that you can invest, you can advance his kingdom. And the Bible says the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so we on this platform, that is our focus. But what will it profit us if we win the whole world and lose our souls? So that is where we are right now. And if you are on this platform, you find yourself here, you are a remnant army. So the Lord said global remnant army, people who will stand for the globe, who will stand to bring back God's kingdom on planet Earth. So we begin, we are laying the foundation. So today, the, the, the bishop of Uganda, you know, if you know how Uganda is structured, you will know that what we are doing is really in the center of God's heart. The Lord told us that the heart of Africa, when we raise that altar in the heart of Africa, he will raise the liberator. We went and raised the altar in the heart of Africa. And you all, they were there. So many of you sponsored the, the program. Some of you went and we did that. And that liberator now is answerable to the president of Uganda in charge of the entire Pentecostal church in Uganda. So that is the bishop who calls this morning to give us a report. And when I got there, he made me his personal advisor. So who is advising him? This platform is advising a nation. So God has given us one nation. Yesterday. Oh, you're muted. The Kenya is, is, is uh, inviting us to come to Kenya and help them you know, raise their own altars and establish their foundation. So we'll be taking the, the nations one after the other. So we have to learn to live bigger than us. So now this morning, when he called, he said the, the head of state have given them, the, first of all, the head of state invited them to a, a program. 
and they went there in a very close uh, circle. You know, he was celebrating his 50th anniversary. And so he invited some special people and he was one of them who were invited to come and pray. And then after that, they had a meeting and the head of state said the 26th of September is the day of the coronation in Uganda. And then he told me that we have a stand. He's going to put a special stand for us. So you are free. You want to go to Uganda? Let me know. You have a presidential invitation. Why? Because you are in the global remnant army. Because you are on this platform and you are paying the price. So God is giving you the nation you have prayed for. And that's how he will give us the nations one after the other. So I want to encourage us that whatever you sow on this platform is on very fertile ground. And please, sow generously. This is a move that needs investment. So ask the Lord, don't even ask Kwame. Ask God, what, what, what do I invest? How do I, what do I do? Should I go? You can buy your ticket and fly there. If you cannot go, you can sponsor some other people. You know, so it is our time to begin to take the nations as God is giving them to us. So you say September is a year, is a month of uh, manifest. Uh, what did you say it was? Month of uh, great expectation. Great expectation. I'm already telling you that 26 we have a presidential invitation, and it's going to continue from there to Kenya. So that was just my own announcement. I didn't want to begin to announce when you are announcing because I will take over the announcement and take a lot of time. But now we'll, let's go to the Word of God. What the Lord gave me for us today, and I would like us to open the Bible to Nehemiah chapter chapter two mm -hmm. but before then i would like for uh brother kwame to pray for me as i share the word mighty god our father we thank you for your daughter we thank you father for your servants we thank you for our mother we thank you for our pastor our apostle our teacher we thank you, Lord, for evangelists. We thank you, Father, because you have deposited in this your daughter all the fivefold ministries. So, Father, we say thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to receive from her this time. Papa, we pray that may the words that come out, may the words that proceed from her be spirit and life. May they affect our environment and change our atmospheres so that we leave this place, so gracious God, different. May we have those who have come to the meeting, who have come to the service as lambs, Lord. May we return to our homes as lions, because we have come and we have received from the servant of the Lion of Judah. Daddy, we honor and bless you for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, Mother Mildred, we are reading from NIV. Can you just put it up and then read from verse 1 to 10? Verse 1 to 10. Nehemiah chapter 2, 1 to 10. Okay. So, Nehemiah chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10, NIV. Artaxerxes sends Nehemiah to Jerusalem. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in the presence in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I was, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king, if it pleases the king and if, it, if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, how long will your journey take and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct under, until I arrive in Judah. 
and may I have a letter to Asaf, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the temple wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my requests. So I went to the governors of Trans Euphrates and gave him the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry, cavalry with me. When Sanballat, the Horonites, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I will just be taking one verse and explaining what the Lord has laid on my heart. As the waves go, you take what God has put in your heart. I would like that uh, at the end, Mommy Mildred will lead us to pray. The Bible says, in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. This is Nehemiah speaking. He was the cup bearer of the king. And uh, the cup bearer, when you read and go back, you discover that the cup bearer was the one that took all the, if they, because they were, the king's life was always in danger. So before he eats or before he drinks, the cup bearer has to taste the food and taste the wine. So anything that was uh, uh, meant for the king, the cup bearer is the one who will die because if they poison the food and the cup bearer takes it, he will die so the king will not eat the food. So the cup bearer was not a very happy person, but he had to, to do that work and he was supposed to be smiling all the time as if he's ready to die for the king, you know, but deep down he was a very sad person. So when you go to verse one, when Hanani came and told him that the, the gates and the walls of his uh, country, his, his ancestral home was burnt down. That day, he, wasn't, he, he didn't know how to play the, the game, the facade no more. He had his true countenance because, you know, you could tell that he was, people he was used to just laugh when he was not happy. But then today he couldn't. And so the king noticed it. And he was like, so the king asked me, why does your face look so sad? When you are not ill, this can be nothing but sadness of heart. And the Bible says, I was very much afraid because he was afraid because what was in his heart, you know, actually showed on his face. And so he was afraid because he was not supposed to be, 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 be sad. He was not supposed to be, to have that temperament. So fear took over him. And so sometimes we are like Nehemiah, maybe we are here trying to be smiling, trying to be working hard and think, looking as if things are fine. But let me tell you, there's no place like home. Once your home is not, you can't even go back there. Like for the case of some of us in Africa where there's war and stuff. Once you can't go back home, once your home, the gates are burnt, the walls are torn. Yes, you are smiling at work because you have to smile at work. There are some things you have to do. Oh, hello, hi, how are you? You are keeping some temperaments that are all false just because you need to survive, you need to eat. But deep down in your heart, you are crying. I, I, I believe that, that that is my situation. You know, I, I don't know about you, but that is my situation. If I have to choose where I will be, I will be in Bamenda very fast. That's where I will be. That's where I'll be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I will come to America and shop and go right back. I will come and visit and go right back. But because the gates are burned, the walls are torn, it is difficult for me to go. And so sometimes we, that's how we are, even spiritually. You know, you are just managing and coping. But things are not going the way they're supposed to go. So you come in the presence of your brethren, you have to smile, you have to make up, you have because they know that, oh, this is Mama Pauline, she's supposed to come and bring the word, so all is well with you. You try to put a picture that is not real. That is how life is. Life is not, is not real. But verse 3 says, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins? 
and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Time to stop the facade. Time to stop the lies. Time to change the game. He was supposed to be telling the king, oh, I am sorry. I'm not supposed to be sad in front of the king. I'm so, But this guy, he was time out. The seasons had changed. He said, why? That king himself was shocked that Nehemiah could ask him why. You know, I don't know who your king is. It may be your husband. It may be your, at your job or whoever that king is. It's time to change your countenance and be real. It's time to change your temperament and be real. It's time to stop the facade. You understand? So under normal circumstances, the one who brought this, the news about the condition of his, his home really, really touched him to a point where that which was inside came out on its own. And what did the king say? The king said to me, what is it you want? You know, the king, the king, <laughs> the fear of, 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 of God, I believe, dropped on that king. The, 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 the condition, the situation, the burden in Nehemiah's heart trans was transferred to that king immediately. And the Lord was telling me that it's about time we begin to express the reality of situations. It may be personal. It may be family at the family level, it may be at the church level, but most expect, especially at the situation of your, your hometown. So the king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven. The Bible says he prayed. He did not just answer, he prayed. And I answered the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah, where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. You know, it is time for you to get the pass that you need to go back and rebuild. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is it that has torn down, has been torn down. But for me, the entire continent of Africa has been torn down. Listen, I'm a visioner. So I'm not here to 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 to, to take care, nurture you like mommy Mildred and the requirement does. So that's why I don't come to the platform very often because when I come, I can blow your mind away. You know, for me, I'm about the continent. We have to begin to look at our continent. Who will build it for us? Are we going to raise our children in the diaspora and leave them there without a root? What are we doing? That's, that's personal. That's my approach to it because I'm doing the God-sized thing. The Lord said, ask for the nations. Ask of me and I will give you the nations. So the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, how long will your journey take? And when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me. So I set a time. You know, it is time for us to rise up with a mind to reconstruct. Uh, going back to Cameroon, which is my country of origin, in the last seven years, they've been tearing it down, burning the gates, tearing the walls, the Anglophones fighting against the Francophones, the Francophones killing the Anglophones and the Anglophones killing the Francophones. But when you go and remove the uniform from the Amber Boys who are fighting, and you remove the uniform from the military soldiers who are fighting, you will see a black man standing before, in front of you. You will not be able to tell who is Anglophone and who is Francophone. So there are some kings who are responsible for what is going on. And it's about time to look at them in their faces and not play the facade anymore. So when we're praying for Africa, that's why God wants the global remnant army. It's about time we pray the right kind of prayer. It's about time we speak to which, who, whichever king is standing before us. Me, I'm going to Uganda. I'm going to be speaking to that king about the continent. Because I know that that king has a testimony. So I'm not just going there to be religious. I'm going to speak about the walls that are burnt. 
and the gates of Cameroon, of Africa. So which king are you standing by? What is on your heart? The Lord is calling us the gates of our ancestry. You say, how? You know, and I answer the king, if it please the king and if your servant has found favor in the sight, let him send me to the city where my ancestors are buried. You no, know, I want to go to this. So the king asked me, why does your face look sad, verse 2, when you are not ill? This can nothing be sadness of heart. But I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins? Why is your face not sad? Why are you smiling? Going up and down, making dollars and, 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 and pounds. What do you want to do with those dollars if it is not for the rebuilding of the land of your ancestry? What if tomorrow morning somebody gets up here and says, I don't want to see anybody who is not in my color? Like they told Ghana, Ghana must go. Once upon a time, somebody came there and said, don't want to see any Ghanaian in Nigeria and send them back and look at Ghana today. The people went there and Ghana has never been the same. So it's about time to stop thinking about here and now and begin to look at there and then. Because when God gives you a vision, it's long-term, but he orders your steps toward that, towards that vision because you don't know what next will happen the next morning. Somebody told me coronavirus have started. And I was so pissed off because, you know, one other person was kind of celebrating. You know, but what if they shut down the, the nations again and we cannot make the money that we are making? What plans do we have in the spirit? We, it's about time we begin to look years ahead, begin to look miles ahead, begin to look at the vision and don't just live for the moment. Because when you look at the big picture, you will be sacrificial. You know, where was I? Verse six, then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, how long will your journey take? And when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me. So I, I said the time. I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal pack, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. Everything that you need to rebuild is available. The problem is just for you to change your temperament, to change your countenance. The, 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 the problem is for you to be sick in the heart, to be concerned about the state of affairs of your motherland. You understand? When they say, so I went to the governor and he gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent an army officer and cavalry with me. So more than you even ask will be released for you mm. when that time comes. But verse 10 says, when Sambalat and the, the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. Of course, I'm not even surprised because when you go to the next level, you have the next devil standing there. But the Bible says, he that is in us is greater. That's why we have the global remnant army. Because right now, when you open your mouth in Uganda and say, Cameroon, the whole nation is praying. You say America, the whole nation is praying. Why? Because this platform, you understand, rescued them. They have a whole prayer, because that country is a nation of intercessors. They have a whole pro prayer program that they pray for us name by name every day. When I say every day, I mean every day. You understand? So that army is set. It is time. I don't know where you come from. You'll be coming from Congo. You may be coming from Ghana or from whatever. I've looked on the line and I see we are all, almost everybody is an African, even if you're African-American. 
you're African. The land of your ancestry is the continent of Africa. Chinese are defending, they are, they, they are not treated the way we are treated. Why? Because we don't care. So it's about time we begin to wake up like Nehemiah. Yes, Nehemiah was there and, uh, uh, you know, trying the way we are all trying in the diaspora. But the 20th month of that king, Artaxerxes, came and things changed. You understand? The man was sad. The Bible says, the king said, this can be nothing but sadness of heart. Because the king, even the kings that are in charge of whatever they are doing to you, they know, they know that, that they are making your heart sad. But because you are afraid, because you don't even know that you have what it takes to rebuild, you understand? They are waiting. They are waiting for that day. And that's why the Lord said it's a global remnant army. So I want to tell us that it is time to rebuild. And the Lord was telling me that he built the walls with burnt bricks, like burnt stones. The stones that were burnt out there. I started seeing all those children who have been drugged and, and used to fight some senseless wars. We don't make no guns. We don't have a gun producing industry. But we have more guns, you understand, than any other country that produces the guns. It's about time we wake up like Nehemiah and be sad. And when you get up and say, Lord, give me Africa, you have to start from your motherland. Give me my nation. The Lord will begin to show you how to invest. He'll begin to show you the sacrifices you have to make. One little step at a time. Look at where we started, where we first raised that altar. I'm sure it's in 2019 or so. The, the, the revelation came in 2019. We raised that altar. When was that date? I'm not very good at dates. Huh? 2020. 2020. This is 2020, 2021, 2020, 2023. We already have a nation. What if we, we, we continue? Now, it is just a few remnant army here. We have that nation. What will happen if those two nations come together to take the next nation and the next nation? You discover that put 10 years down, we cover the whole continent. So it's about time you be like Nehemiah. May the spirit of Nehemiah fall upon us because the Lord says he wants to repair the ruins. He wants to repair the ruins. But some angels will not jump from the sky and land down here to go and repair your ruins for you. You cannot sit in the diaspora forever. And no matter how much you make and acquire here, one good morning, it can be taken away from you. So it's about time we rise up with what we have, with everything in us, like Nehemiah, and just change your countenance. The next person sitting by you at work, just look at your face and say, what is it? You say, why will I be happy when this is going on? Why will I be happy when this is going on? Why will I not be sad? The Bible says the fear of Gideon hit the land when he blew his trumpet. There is a there's a there's a, there's, there's, there's a weapon called fear. You know, there's somebody who, who 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 has been disturbing my life recently. I was sharing with Brother Kwame. When I got this revelation, I turned. And the, the, the kind of, of countenance that I brought, he just told me, Mama, what do we do? You understand? So what 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 do we do now? <laughs> so sometimes. You have to just change your temperament. That's what God is telling us. The way we are right now is to ask God to make your heart sick about the state of affairs in your land. And when you go to uh, Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 28, if you look at verse 28, just put Nehemiah chapter 3 and we'll close with that on the wall. On the board. Coming up. Mm 
Nehemiah 3, if you even read uh, verse 1 to Nehemiah 3, the Bible says, Eliashib, the high priest, and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the ship gate. You know, they dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated as far as the Tower of Hananiah. It is time to rededicate the land to the Lord. And while we all were sitting here, Brother Kwame again invested so much with Rabbi, and they gathered the whole Northwest and they rededicated it to the Lord spiritually. Amen. Are we there? Yes, we are. Yes. So that, that was done. But now it's about time to, to go to verse. Uh, 28. Can you read verse chapter 3, verse 28? I can't see very well what you put on the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. says, Above the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, the high priests were gathered, you know, I think sure it's last month, you know, the, the, all the pastors in the northwest regions, regions came together. The pastors in the southwest need to come together. The pastors in Gabon, in, in your nation, they need to come together and rededicate the land. That's where it starts. And then after that, each priest go to your own gate. Can you read that again? Yes. It says, above the horse gate, the priests made repairs each in front of his own house. Amen. The, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. So this is what the Lord told us. So you are going to be fighting with one hand and building with the other hand. And because our weapons are not carnal, we need this GRA. So on a practical, uh, um, uh, because me, when I hear God, I'm out of here. So I'm going to Cameroon as soon as soon before I get to Uganda, because you, you work by example to map out the territory and start from my own gates, which is Bamenda. You know, many people are saying, don't go to Bamenda, I am going, because it is time for the rebuilding or, or the repairing of the ruins. And I know that I know that the first step to repair the ruins in Bamenda is to begin to build rehabilitation facilities, because those children, who, who have guns in their hands, they, they drop them and use them to shoot. It's about time to begin to pull them out and, and, and put them in a rehab and recalibrate their minds. Because the Lord said he's going to rebuild the walls out of burnt bricks, burnt stones. So they have been burnt, but they can be repaired. So there is power to repair the ruins. So I want to encourage us that there's work to do. We go to Uganda to establish continue to raise the, the spiritual army and we go to Cameroon, to Bamenda and to the Northwest and Southwest regions to begin to build rehabs. People could raise funds to send for guns to be born, to be bought. They have fought, they have made their point. It's about time to rebuild. And that's where we come in because we are the Nehemiahs of this season. God wants to repair the ruins. God wants to rebuild the ruins. That is about Cameroon. That is about Africa. I don't know about your life. Whatever ruins are going on, God wants to repair everything that is ruined in your life, both spiritually and, 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 and physically. I don't know about your children. I don't know about your marriage. I don't know about your job. I don't know what is it that seems a ruin in your life. The Lord says this is a time. All you need to do is change your countenance, change your temperament. The Lord will bless you before a king in the season. The Lord will put you in front of that king who will ask you, what then can I do? What can I do for you? And so I thank God for the opportunity on the platform. The platform is open. So Brother Kwame, over to you before I belabor the points. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Pauline, for this uh, message. It's time to rebuild the ruins. It's time to rebuild, you know, the, the ruins as in the nations and the ruins in your own situation, your family. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we have heard this word that has come. We've heard how 
the information that Nehemiah received troubled him. It troubled him, and because of that, he could not hide his countenance anymore. He took that countenance before the king. It was a risky venture. We heard how the grace of the Lord was upon him, and the king responded to him favorably. All of us are dealing with ruins. For some, it's a continent in ruins. For some, it's a nation in ruins. For some, it's a village in ruins. Some, it's a family in ruins. Some, it is the individual in ruins. Whatever the ruins you are dealing with, the word has come to remind us that the Lord is asking us to step up to rebuild the ruins. He will not send angels to come and rebuild the ruins, but he would use the burnt blocks, the burnt stones, to even those parts of you that have been burnt, that have been hurt so badly, those same parts, the Lord is going to use them for your good. Turn, it, around. Turn it around and use them to become uh, blocks in the new wall, in the new house, in the new mansion, in the new you. Amen. Amen. Give that and we receive the strategy which is first off to look at the problem in its entirety. For instance, election was supposed to be going on in Gabon today. You're looking at Gabon as a nation. Then who was supposed to, I mean, the elections were yesterday. Who was supposed to vote? You look at the individual. Because the strategy is rededicate the entire land. Then you come out to you in front of your own house and you start rebuilding. Mm. That is the strategy. You rededicate the entire situation. You present the big picture to the Lord. Say, Daddy, I understand. This is the big picture. And this is where I see myself in that big picture. I will start rebuilding right here. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for this word. And um, we'll ask for a few comments, a few feedbacks. Then, like Pastor Pauline had requested, Mother Mildred will lead us to a time of prayer. Any inputs? Build your church. You are the church. Any ruins in our lives, it is time to rebuild. It is Amen. time to rebuild. Amen. 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 It is time to rebuild. In the absence of any, <laughs> <laughs> any additional feedback. Amen. Amen. So, mommy, thank you for this message. There's just so many angles to it that if we have to talk about it here, we'll, we'll spend the whole morning. Thank you so much for the reawakening, just awakening us to the realities of our situations and yeah. looking inside the facade. So as you spoke, um, I just came up with three three prayer points, which I'd like to oh. thank for the Lord this morning. I want us to pray on the aspect of truth, favor and sacrifice uh, the bible says that in psalms 85 verse 11 truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven it's uh, time for us to lay aside the facade and begin to face uh, the truth until we face the truth until that truth springs out from the earth i don't want you to see the earth as the ground that you stand upon now you and I were created from that ground. So we are that ground, that earth right now we're talking about. That truth will spring out of us and righteousness will look down from heaven. Because until we are we are truthful, the Lord cannot respond to our uh -uh. 
Okay. Let us be in line of truth with the message. Okay. Nehemiah laid aside the facade. It's time for us to lay it aside. Let us pray. Father, oh, we thank you. Because it's time of truth. truth. It's time for us to experience. The righteousness shall look down from We therefore lay aside the facade. Nehemiah laid aside and he faced the truth about his situation. He spoke to the king sincerely about what his nation was going through, and he received the help that was necessary for that season. But I pray in the name of Jesus that, your, that we will all face the truth. We believe the truth, express the truth, so that we will receive help, tangible help. You know, the word speaks out of the earth. Righteousness shall look down from heaven. But how can you look down from heaven? How can you speak up? How can you dispatch mm -hmm. angels to come and fight for us and go ahead of us and pave the way from us for us if we are not truthful in our ways? But the first pray in the name of the spirit of truth to overwhelm us today. in the name of this and will overtake us. Of your word is truth, O oh God. As we receive the truth within us, we will examine our our situations with eyes of truth, O oh God, so that we can now proclaim truth in our situations, O oh God, so that we can now receive help from above and from the sources that you have designed for us. Because truth in this season is that key that will unlock the favor for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, let's Amen. only pray that let's be purposeful about being truthful. Amen. Amen. Let's pray about favor because it took favor for King Artaxerxes to respond to Nehemiah. But I want us to also mm -hmm. look at the case of Esther. I'm just going to read this brief portion here. It says Esther 5, 2 to 3. Now on the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall facing the entrance. When he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the gold scepter that was in his hand. So Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. Then the king asked, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Amen. Even up to have the kingdom to be given to you, beloved. Our prayer this morning is for the favor of God to be demonstrated through his leaders, people from mm -hmm. high places, people who have the solution to our problems. Remember in the days of Esther, the Israelites were going to be destroyed, but Esther was the solution to a nation. Amen. Uh -huh. So he has come to remind us that we are solutions to our nations. And we are praying that the kings, the people in high places will send out, will show us their golden scepter, the hand of favor, they'll extend the hand of favor towards us. And we will respond mm -hmm. to it. It is not time to shy uh -huh. away. Of. Esther touched the tip of the scepter. So when this hand of favor is extended to us, may we receive it in the name of Jesus. And the kings of our times will ask us, what is your request? Prepare your request. Oh. It's not time to stand before them and wonder why you requested their favor. Amen. So let us pray Amen. and ask the Lord for his favor that you should... hmm. What's going on? He's uh, disconnected. So we are praying and asking the Lord for favor. Ask mm. the favor. Pray for favor. You know, for read favor. The scriptures, so let us let us pray. Father, Daddy, we come to ask, oh God, for your yeah, favor. The people of oh God of Israel were to be asked. Favor with the kings the time, in the nation. Had prepared their daughter Esther for a time God. such as this one. And Lord, the even as she went before the king, the God, her of father, the golden scepter was extended to him of Jesus Christ of God. Favor. favor. So this day, our Father, we pray that we also, Lord, shall receive 
favor. favor. Change the course of our destiny. That we have to say, Lord, we just call our Father to change our souls. And we will be beneficiaries of people in this season, in the name of Jesus. We pray and let wisdom to prepare our requests even before we stand before the kings in the name of Jesus. That our requests will be ready and our minds will be set and the courage will be our portion in the name of Jesus so that when we stand before these kings, we will not babble, Lord, but we will speak clearly about the situations that we are facing and about the kind of help and favor that is required of us in this season in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you Thank you for favor. Thank you for the angels that you're releasing in this season to go and awaken our sources of favor in the name of Jesus. We receive favor today. We position ourselves to receive favor just like Queen Esther positioned herself, just like Nehemiah positioned himself before the king to receive favor. So to this day, we trust you, oh God, to order our steps to reposition us before the, the solutions of our our situations, the solutions to the problems that our nations are facing in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So we're going to pray in, in light of sacrifice. We've prayed in light of truth, in light of favor. Now I want to pray in light of sacrifice. I'll read to us from Esther chapter 4 from verse 12 to 16. The Bible says that when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. I say it this way, do not think because you are in the West, do not think because you are in the United States of America or because you're in the UK or you're in Europe, do not think that because you're in those places and out of your homeland that you escape because you're not, um, you're not facing the, the, the troubles of your nation directly. Verse 14 yeah. says that for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews for your nation will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. Amen. Wow. And who Amen. knows that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther yeah. sent this reply to Mordecai. Beloved, we have come to a royal position for such a time as this. And may we not think that if we are silent, we will escape. Amen. Uh, so I pray that we will take this advice of Mordecai to Esther, this advice from our mother to us, and wake yeah. up and begin to make the necessary sacrifices. Esther, after, after receiving this word from Mordecai, his men, her mentor, she went ahead to fast and pray. And what did she say? She said, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Okay. Amen. Yeah. That should be yeah. our mindset. If we perish, we perish. But we will not be silent. Let us pray for the grace to make the... Uh, requisite sacrifices in this season. Let us pray. Father, Father in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for the grace, oh God, that you have positioned us in our royal positions in such a time as this. Father, you positioned us, you prepared us for such a time as this so that we can now go back to rescue our nations. Just like Mordecai advised Esther, he said, do not think that because you are in the king's house, may we not think that because we are in the West and we will, uh, we, that it means that we have escaped the terror that is happening in our nations. May we not think so, oh Father, because what affects them affects us because that is our homeland. 
But Father, we pray that we will not remain silent, that if relief and deliverance must come, may it come from us in the name of Jesus. May relief and deliverance not be sought from other nations, but may we become the relief and the deliverance for our nations in the name of Jesus. Your word says that for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. I declare in the name of Jesus that none of our family members and our father's houses will perish in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And we will all arise to this call and bring relief and deliverance. We receive yeah. grace to become the sources of relief and deliverance in the name of Jesus. And we, our yeah. declaration these days is that if we perish, we perish. But because Esther did not perish, we know that we will not perish in the process. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Kwame. Thank you. Mm. The Lord bless you and keep you. Yeah. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious yes. to you. Yes. Yeah. Turn his face towards you and give yeah. you peace. Amen. 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 May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Love of God. God. The God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And surely God's goodness will follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Bless you all, and thanks so much for worshiping with us today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mama Pauline. Amen. Thank you, Mama Pauline. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Je n'ai pas la force pour Thanks. faire le commentaire. I can't comment. I will no. just enter and try yeah. to work again. I need to work hard. Yeah. There are some things you say is sans commentaire. Yes. yes. Because it is too.